Welcome to another edition of CSEC Literature Circle, where we invite you to join us in an exciting and informative exploration of some poems which appear on the CSEC English B Syllabus 2018-2023. to My name is Leslie Lett, and today we are fortunate to have with us three experienced teachers of literature. And they are from my immediate left, Miss Carol Ann Garner, Miss Rosemary Rudder, and Miss Kerry McLean. In this particular episode, we are going to critically examine the poem, My Parents, by Stephen Spender. And as usual, it is helpful to get some context from this, for this poem. Mr. Spender, he was very much interested, and his poems reflect this interest, in themes of social justice and class struggle. Please remember that as you read the poem. Also, another interesting tidbit is that Mr. Spender, as a youth, was, he had a disability of a club foot and a stammer. And he was intensely infected, uh, affected by this. And he was also very dis resentful of his parents trying to protect him with these disabilities. And later in life, he spoke of that resentment of not being able to mix and be one of the others. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask Carol Ann to read the poem, My Parents, by Stephen Spender. My Parents. My parents kept me from children who were rough, who threw words like stones, and who wore torn clothes. Their thighs showed through rags. They ran in the street and climbed cliffs and stripped by country streams. I feared more than tigers their muscles like iron, their jerking hands and their knees tight on my arms. I feared the salt coarse pointing of those boys who copied my lisp behind me on the road. They were lithe. They sprang out behind hedges like dogs to bark at my world. They threw mud while I looked the other way, pretending to smile. I longed to forgive them, but they never smiled. In this poem, there are three stanzas, and it's in the form of a quatrain. There is no significant rhyme scheme. The theme that we focused on really is childhood experiences. However, there are several other themes that come out as we have read, and a few of them show that the persona was often rejected, he felt alienated, he was bullied, and when we look at his life and what they would have done to him, it shows a child who was sheltered. He did not have much of a life as he would see it because his parents kept him away from everything he thought was the best for him. Now when we looked at him as an individual, when we look at the first stanza, he says, my parents kept me. And even when we look at the title, it just focused on my parents. It didn't say he kept this idea about himself or about them. He said, my parents. And he said they kept me from children who were rough who threw words like stones and who wore torn clothes. And this suggests to us that these children were in somewhat more impoverished than he was. Um, they ran the streets and climbed cliffs and stripped by country streams, normal things that boys would do in the country or boys normally would do as they went about their everyday playtime. I feared more than tigers, their muscles like iron, their jerking hands and their knees tight on my arms. Now this is the part where we, we get to that he, stop, he talks about their bullying. Um, although it doesn't sound as though it was something that he de detested, it just sounded like it was something that they did to him. And in fact, it wasn't that he wanted them to be away from him, it was like he wanted them to be a part of his life. Further down the line, we see that they mocked his impediment, his speech impediment. And then in stanza three, he talked about how they acted around him. When they looked at him, they were trying to jump at him. And even then, when they did those things to him, he still wanted some sort of acceptance. In as much as they would throw, throw mud, in as much as they would jump out at him, this boy still wanted some kind of, of relationship with these children who 
were mean to him at some point in time. It's like the children in Barbados who sometimes say, I want you to be my friend even though you are mean to me. It's not that he has to beg for friends. It is just that because of the restrictions of his parents, he decided even though they didn't want him to be involved with these children, he needed to have this kind of relationship. Okay, um, thank you, Carolyn. But let's look at the, 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 the thematics now. Uh, we have the persona. We would say, how would we characterize the persona? How would we characterize him? I would characterize him as a typical young man. The persona? The, 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 per, the persona. The persona. Yes, a typical young man. But from what class? From, what from, the, from the probably a middle class. Certainly he is. He's not well, more well off yeah, than, well than off. The, the boys he's describing. But he's a typical young man. That's how I would characterize Does him. that create the distance between him and the other children? I was thinking when Caroline was speaking that the alienation that this child experiences is really not at the hands of the boys who bullied him, but more his parents. I don't know if you agree with me. Um, not. Not, not, not necessarily disagree. I think the actions of the parents lead to him being alienated from the other boys. He's been raised to feel himself different from these boys because not only because of this list as in place, well not in place, stated point blank that he has a list, but I believe he has been raised to feel he's different from these boys because they're rough, so to speak, because their clothes are torn, they wear rags, and he doesn't do these things. He's with mommy and daddy, all protected and safe. But does he feel a sense of revulsion at the, the clothing of these boys and what they do? Because I'm not getting that feeling of revulsion. <laughs> I think he might. The salt coarse pointing of these lips, the, of these boys. Salt coarse. These boys are unrefined. They're not like me. And that, it's subtle. It's very, very, very subtle because we always assume as adults, or even if we're victim ourselves, that the child who is being bullied is not, is always the victim, which most of the time it is. But could it, there be something within that child that could make them not very likable? But that is itself not a justification. <laughs> bullying, let's make I, that clear. I never said it's a justification. But in the first answer, I get the, I, I'm not, I, I don't see it your way at all. I see it as the child sees all of the things of the other children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the rough children, which I think is a word he gets rough. from his parents. Yes, but he's still um, embraced that it. He, 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 there's a freedom. Mm -hmm. There's a freedom that he wants to experience. They can do, they don't have that parental restriction, the imposed restriction of his parents on him to separate him from people who he sees as represented freedom and um, uh, escape from parental depression. I, I do not get, I don't get that in the diction, I don't, or the imagery, I do not get that feeling of a snobbery from the boy. He looks down on them. I don't get that sense of condescension. I think it's a, it's a, almost an envy. I would like to be like them. Yes. I would like to run a boat and climb cliffs, cliffs and strip before it streams, which I think is, is, a, is a natural boy yes. instinct. And, and if added to that, they threw mud why I looked away and pretending to smile. And then I longed to forgive them. Why would he be thinking that they are less than he is if he longed to forgive them? It was like he was trying to initiate some kind of contact that I can say, yes, let's be friends. Who say that they want his forgiveness? But, but they, they, they had done his such, such things to him. But may, may I jump in here? It is not about the fact that they want, because we're getting it from his mm -hmm. perspective. So it's not about if they want his forgiveness. I think the idea that he would forgive someone who mm -hmm. treated ah, him I like that, uh -huh. you know, speaks volumes to him. And despite his socialization, uh -huh. I think that's a positive. Okay, I 
definitely see your point, especially when we look at the title of the poem mm -hmm. and the fact that he calls the poem My Parents. This is about what my, my parents, parents did. All right? Even though all the other themes that Miss Garner spoke to that came out, it's what resonates with this boy into adulthood because when we look at it, it is very much a poem which is reflective. reflective. And when he's looking back on his childhood, how he chooses to title this boy, My Parents, he seems to hold his parents more culpable than he actually does these boys. Okay. This the, is the parents are the ones who impose this sense of standard. alienation that mm -hmm. made him separate and apart from people who we'd want to share that experience with, our, our, our experience of boyhood. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and added to that, if, if for me, if it was that he felt... Uh, or not that he felt, if it, was, if it was that he was condescending, I believe that last stanza would have been different. And I felt that he would have described it truly differently. He would have, exactly. he would have said it's this also in the last stanza he called them dogs. No, I said, I don't get the feeling of revulsion at all. He doesn't call them dogs. He, he makes a comparison. Here, this Correct. is how That's I see point. it. This boy's walking along and they want to startle him. Like how a dog would just jump out at you. So, um... He didn't call them dogs. He likened their behavior. Mm -hmm. So I that, wouldn't, that, I wouldn't say... That's a good place now to, to look, look at some of the language. Because mm -hmm. yes. it's, 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 it's great. Um, look at the, the first simile. Through words like stones. You know, the effect of that is stones are, are hurtful and painful. Yeah. I think that's a very effective... Um, image because we know when you throw stones they hit anybody this indiscriminate but there's also the expression sticks and stones mm -hmm. will break my bones and your words will never harm me what a foolish thing what well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's quite laughs> maybe that explains <laughs> why well, despite that, their behavior he yeah. longs to forgive them because they they i don't think he holds them any contact towards mm -hmm. them for their words he, he probably said oh just like how we are seeing his his socialization, that's their socialization. So they grew up hurt. And that could be a rejection of the same thing you said, because the words are like stones, and stones can hurt. So yeah. words are stones, they are painful. Um, let's, and, and we have, yes. I fear more than tigers, they are muscles like iron. The effect of that would be to, to heighten the Strength. sense that they're, they're strong, I think hard, that this, I tough. I think the persona is stronger than he gives himself credit for, you know, in... He's fearing them. The physical abilities. The, the physical, but what his strength lies in. His forgiveness. Is, is his ability to, to withstand ah, that and to, to reach the point where he could forgive them. Okay. We also had the saw right horse in. pointing, which you, you said the saw horse pointing. You said that that to you um, suggested some kind of condescension, the, that the they crass. were rough and, and they were crass. But to me, it's keeping the with me. It's in keeping with the, the description and the image of these boys is consistent. It they're is just consistent. they're just rough boys, coarse it's rough. Yeah. But is, this, is, it said, is it said with a sense of <laughs> malice? No. Mal malice and resentment. I, I don't get that. Okay. Um, they sprang up behind hedges like dogs to bark at my world. Okay. Well. They did not bark like dogs. They sprang out. The emphasis is on them, on the, on the boys trying to startle out, him. Yes, yeah, just things that boy would do. Jumpo would scare you. But like, but what, what Kevin's saying? That, why like the dogs. choice? Why, why mm -hmm. the choice of dogs? dogs. And it, I think that that is consistent with the image of being rough, you know? Crass. Because it's not for, be, be, <laughs> not, not beneath. Because you can be, different. you can be crass but not condescending, you know. Okay. They ran in the street. These are street children versus children behind. And remember too, Carrie, that mm -hmm. a lot of the way he perceives is colored by his parents. Yes. What his remember? This is a little boy. But this the, it's an adult looking back now. Right, but in the in the poem, it's an adult looking back. But also in the poem, he's a little boy, and his perception at that time would have been of the the, the, the boy of age. I think the diction impresses that the 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 and sophisticated language of a little boy. I, and I, unsophisticated in that young, but in my opinion, there's still very much the sense of a posh 
upbringing. But it's difficult sometimes, and you know, it's crafting to separate the, 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 the persona and that intervention that comes from the writer. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you're seeing is a case of that difficulty in separating the two. I mean, no, don't really see any comparisons between him and these boys. Most of the focus is on how these boys do what they do and how mm -hmm. they react to him and how he would long to be like them. It's very possible to desire the thing that I don't want to say grosses you out, that you hold in contempt. Yeah, inherent in a lot of human these of slave slave masters and slaves. The only uh, the only way I could see that line of reasoning. You could desire something you hold in contempt, and I desire in, in what way? Desire to be to a, desire a, to be the be thing that you hold master? in contempt. No, the slave masters desires for the slaves, for the slave women. Mm. They hold oh. them in contempt, but they still desire them. But I I just think that is just part of property. That's not necessary that they deserve them. It, they belong um, to us so we can do what okay. we want with them. Okay, let's put it to a contemporary context. You want to, you grow up very, very, very sheltered. Don't sit and you go to secondary school, the transition between secondary, you were told mm -hmm. all your life they keep kept away from a certain class of people and you go to secondary and you have, you're filled with this morbid, curiosity about being with them but deep down inside you know that you're really supposed to be with them so you're sneaking out and doing what you gotta do because it's totally so against your attraction and forbidden yeah i think that's rebellion that she's addressing it, rebellion isn't there a sense but is it there is a sense yes, of rebellion is, because his parents. But he does not agree with his parents point of view but i think that the different. child yes. invariably the child who rebels still bears some of the parents burden of but you are the what they're supposedly drawn to in contempt. It's, it is not that he's holding it in, it, holding them in contempt. He may be drawn to that because they are so free, they can go and strip off their clothes and jump in, in the street. The but, freedom, but I do think, and maybe I'm being colored by experiences. That's what I'm saying. Let, let, mm -hmm. what it, let us look for the language, the that diction suggests. that, that, that would suggest this to you. It's an interesting perspective. Because my, my, my think, thinking is that we're dealing with the alienation mm -hmm. that comes from accepting social stratification. Yes, and it, being a British poet and someone who you said went on to become a social activist, we know how deeply embedded social stratification is in Britain. And he is speaking to this, he's critiquing this. So, but, and he's rejecting and it. And he's rejecting it. And, and the ultimate part, analysis, I think he, reject, he rejects, he rejects it. He rejects it. To be Intellectually, he office. knows he should reject it. But what, there's what? a part of him that says, uh, yeah, they really I, are I want you to tell me what you're saying. They really are peasants in truth. These, <laughs> the I, want, rough, I want you to get a reflection in the diction. Rough, rough. Right. The vocabulary. I keep on seeing Charles Dickens and the little, the, the Orphans in charge, Charles Dickens' stats versus the ones who were completely, you know, more or less privileged. I'm seeing that. You run about the well boys. Or even if Barbie, the well boys, we know growing up what our parents call the well boys. And we want goats in a rumble with them barefoot, hopefully. But, <laughs> but why? Why? Because they're nothing sweeter than forbidden fruit. They're re but the but they represent that we see a freedom. It, exactly. Uh, escape but from I rigidity. But I think if we are totally, totally honest with ourselves, we still had a little contempt for them too. A contempt may be a strong, strong word. But that contempt does not come through here. Because the idea, of, the, the idea of contempt is not coming at me I'm at all. I'm seeing it. I am seeing it. These rough children, you want me. And then the fact that they reject him too, how dare you? I think it's that think, might be my colored experiences. So. Yeah, I think it's not because I'm not. I see the content. They ran in the street. They wore torn clothes. My clothes are nice. But as I said to you, I, I and we go back to this. If it was in that case, and we could speculate what the mm -hmm. writer could have put after this. For me, why would he long to forgive them? Try to make some kind of contact with them. If he has such contention in his because heart. Because his isolation, you, for his own peace of mind. This boy is about eight, nine years old. I don't mm -hmm. think 
peace of mind and all that was on his mind. He, he what he mm. was concerned about, these boys have no restrictions. Okay. I am restricted because my parents are keeping me. Restricted, yes. And that, that's definitely, so, choice of time feels definitely. So the, the idea that. that these are, these boys are free and I mm -hmm. am held back. That is where the contention oh, is. Of course. But they are coarse. It's not that that he's calling them. They might be coarse. They smelly. Compared to him, they're but he coarse. Says they're wearing rags. What but does rags connote to you? Is rags just what a else, word? What else do they have to wear? But rags. They're impoverished. That's and maybe they, they um it as they're says, climbing the cliffs, their clothes I didn't, get I didn't torn. see smelly rags. Exactly. Oh, rags. I didn't get that. He didn't, he didn't oh, those talk dirty about boys. Dirty anything. boys. No. He just talked about what they wore, and, and, and they didn't. So if somebody says rags to you it just cannot that person just happens to wear rags it doesn't connote any kind of prejudice. it depends but there's nothing in the entire rags in itself doesn't connote prejudice the, there's nothing no. in the no. entire poem that suggests the the, the the prejudice comes from the parents maybe there's a little um, prejudice on the the boys for the way they treat him, but I think that's more they're just being boys and they're mocking him mm -hmm. because he's different. But mm. to suggest that this little boy has contempt, contempt is such a contempt strong very word. Strong. He, I, that's why I said it's very, very subtle. I do get the feeling that he thinks these boys. I, I get the sense that he envies these boys. Yes, he envies them, but very. it is very possible. This is like, um, you know, you envy somebody, but you can also hold them in contempt. I so the, remember. So the mood you would say is what? What would you? What do you think the mood of the poem is? What it, 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 it evokes a certain response in you. What's what's the mood? Mood is the tone, the tone is, is his is approach. Yeah. His approach. So, uh -huh. His topic. What mood is it? What is it? Is it? So um, there's a certain a slight bitterness. So you you you're disgusted. I'm I'm a little bit bitter, honestly, when I read this because I remember. Okay. For a person that experience, you're like, I wish I could be as bad as them children, do them bad things that them children could do, and my parents think of find out and could do be nothing. But so I thought within myself that what they were doing was bad or the, wrong. But the bitterness from what you said, the bitterness is towards his parents, because they're the ones who are keeping yeah, him. Yeah, I, I mean, from, I, there's no, I don't get a bitterness towards the boy. Yeah, I, I, I am. I feel, I feel sympathy. For him, I can sympathize with his mm -hmm. feelings of alienation. Mm -hmm. No one wants to feel that. Yeah. And even as again the the, the title, my parents. Yes, I agree. T my the parents. Any point title blank. definitely yes. suggests that all the resentments towards the parents. parents. My this is my parents doing, but I still think he's part of them too. And you can't. That you it's you very can't. Subtle. You can't. That's where your dilemma comes because you. Can, you can reject just like in in the, in the test match. You can reject your, but that's still who you are at the yes. end of the day, right? Yes. So while he may reject the values of the parents and hope to go jump in the streams and whatever with the boys, he still sees them he, as well. He is still. That's how he socializes. Yes. You can't take your socialization out of you. He still sees us. So he as well. can't transcend his condition? No. He, he can't transcend it. But he, what I'm saying is it's always going to be a part, however minuscule or dominant mm -hmm. or inner okay. it is. So we have some we have some conflicting views there, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. And that is to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Once you can support your point of view with line, with um, evidence from the poem, that is a great thing about poetry. So we end off how we usually end off by giving some questions that will challenge our students as they examine this poem. Um, I was commenting the significance of the title, My Parents. Despite everything that we have discussed in the poem, bullying all the other themes, My Parents is the title. Why? Another important issue that I would hope that students would question is the role of socialization in the forming of relationships. How do you, your values that you were brought up with determine how you approach relationships? And the third question I could ask is, was the parenting style effective 
they're keeping him away from those boys. Do you think that they were effective? Well, students, those are some questions to make you think as you go about examining the poem. As we've impressed upon you, literature is not just about giving answers, it's about encouraging thought for you to look at your own reality and come up for your own, your own solutions, as your own resolutions to challenges you might face. This has been another edition in CSEC Literature Circle. I do hope you enjoyed it.